Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, a couple of years ago, I created a video on Meshtastic when it was first starting out. Now, fast forward a couple of years and Meshtastic has really grown, not only in the available hardware and firmware features, but also users across the world. Now, in this video, I'll show you some of the LilyGo LoRa devices which are compatible with Meshtastic. Now, each of them have different features, so hopefully this video will help you choose which version to buy if you're looking at a LilyGo product. Now, the first is the popular T-Beam 1.1, which was the first LoRa capable device I used in my videos a couple of years ago. While these are still good and can still be purchased, there are better options out there. Now, the T-Beam 1.1 uses the SX1276 LoRa device, and although this works, it's not the best for today's LoRa expected performance. The T-Beam 1.1 does have 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2 on board, so no problems with connectivity. The LoRa antenna port is in the form of an SMA, which you'll find most portable antennas use. There's also a battery holder on the rear, which uses one of those 18650 vape style batteries, which can be recharged while the device itself is powered via the USB micro port. Now, I hate these ports. USB-C is so much better, and I'm sure you agree with me on that. Now, the onboard GPS is provided by a Neo 6M module with the little GPS antenna mounted above the battery holder and then connected to the board via an IPEX connector. Now, incidentally, you can remove this and use an active GPS antenna, which performs very well, especially if it's one of those magnetic ones that you can kind of stick on your car roof. But the rest of the devices here are the LilyGo LoRa T3 S3 board, the LilyGo T-Watch S3, which I personally think is really cool because you can wear it on your wrist just like a watch, and the strap is also pretty comfortable. We then have the LilyGo T-Deck, which if you're an old timer like me, then you'll think it looks a bit like a Blackberry with its full QWERTY keyboard. And yep, you can use this to send a message. And lastly, we have the creme de la creme, the T-Beam Supreme. Now you may be wondering why I have two of these. Well, they look exactly the same, but there are two differences. Now there's a big difference in price because one uses the M10 GPS receiver and the other uses the L76K GPS receiver. Now the M10 is more expensive, but it does have better GPS performance, but more about that later in the video. So let's take a deeper look at each of these devices. And the first up is the T-Deck. Now what's first noticeable about the T-Deck is that there's an inbuilt keyboard, which is incidentally backlit, making those buttons easy to see in dark environments. The LoRa radio on the T-Deck is the more powerful SX1262. Now, not only does the SX1262 provide 2 dB more power, bringing the total TX power to 22 dB, the receiver is a lot more sensitive compared to the SX1276. As a bonus, the 1262 is less hungry for power. So in theory, you should get better battery performance while using it. Now, the T-Deck doesn't have an internal battery as standard, but it can be powered via the bottom USB-C port, or you can use a small battery connected to the dedicated battery port on the rear board. Now, this will also charge the battery if you're powered via USB. The screen is a 2.8 inch IPS touchscreen, so you can swipe between screens. There's also a trackball you can use to select messages or recipients, or just move the screens. Sending messages can be a little bit fiddly, but it's perfectly doable using the built-in keyboard. Now, in terms of connectivity, the T-Deck has 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5, so connecting to the T-Deck is not an issue, especially with Bluetooth version 5. The LoRa antenna port is via an IPEX connector located on the board. Now, you do get a small, flat and bendy LoRa antenna with the kit, but I think most will use an IPEX to SMA adapter cable and then just use a proper portable antenna, especially if you're going to print a 3D case for the T-Deck. There's also an onboard mic, which is not used at the current time with Meshtastic, but there is a small speaker on the rear, and when you receive a message via LoRa, the speaker will emit an alarm buzzer to alert you there's a new message. Personally, I just unplug mine and use the notifications on my phone for when a new message arrives, but the choice is yours. 
Now next up is the LoRa T3 S3 version one. Now this appears to be the Lilygo version of the popular Heltec V3. It's only about 20 millimeters longer than the Heltec V3, but this device has an SMA socket for the antenna as opposed to an IPEX connector. Now this device also uses the SX1262, so we're looking at the best transmit and receive performance we can get at the moment. 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth version 5 is also on board and works very well with the Meshtastic firmware. You'll be pleased to see that a USB-C socket is instead of those dreaded micro USB ports, so plugging in and out a few times shouldn't be an issue. There's also a 0.96 inch OLED display for those that like to keep an eye on what the device is doing. However, there is no GPS support for this device. Now, I don't personally think not having a GPS is a problem, as if you're using this at home, then you'd set a fixed position anyhow. And if you're using this mobile or portable, then most likely the device you're using to connect to, such as a mobile phone or tablet, you'll have positioning capabilities, which you can set to send to the device within the Mestastic application. Installing firmware for all these devices is pretty much the same and can all be done using a USB cable with the device plugged into your computer. All you need to do then is know the COM port the device is showing as within Device Manager. Now once connected, just head to the Meshtastic Web Flasher page, select your device from the drop-down menu, in my case here I've got the T-LoRa T3 S3, then select firmware version you want, I always install the latest alpha build, and then lastly click on the flash button. Another screen will pop up where you can choose some settings. Now I change the board rate to the fastest possible so that the firmware gets installed faster. I also select the full erase and install checkbox just so I know everything is wiped from memory on board the module and I can start fresh. Then just click the erase and flash green button and you'll now have to choose which COM port your device is plugged into. Once you click connect, it should start the process. However, if you see a screen like this, where the dots are just going along the screen, then you'll have to go back and look up your device on the Meshtastic website, because there's probably a power on procedure you need to perform to make the device accept new firmware. Now, not all devices are like this. Some will just take firmware without any key depressions or certain modes, but there are a few which you'll need to power on while holding a button to put it into firmware download mode. For the T3 S3, you just have to press and hold the boot button while turning on the device. You then just release the boot button after a couple of seconds, and then just go back to the firmware flash page. Choose the same settings as before, and hopefully this time it will start flashing. Now if the process starts, the screen should look like this. Now once flash, you have two choices. You can either use your mobile device or a tablet by Bluetooth and the Meshtastic app to do the first time config, or you can use the web interface. Unplug the device from your computer, plug it back in again, wait a couple of seconds, and then head to the Meshtastic web client. Now here you can click on a new connection, choose serial tab, and then new device. Select your device COM port from the window that pops up, and then you should be able to configure your node. Now the first thing that I like to do is change the name of the node by clicking the little icon on the top left and then entering a name. When you click save, the device will reboot and you may have to reconnect to it once it's rebooted. Now, one of the important settings is setting your LoRa region. So head to the config and then LoRa. Now I'm in the EU, so I choose EU868 and then press save. Again, the node will reboot while it applies that setting. I also like to change the Bluetooth pin to fixed so that I don't have to look at the device's screen for pairing code when using the app, but that's entirely up to you. And once you've made the changes and the node has rebooted, local nodes will start to appear in the peers list. And once they do, you can start sending them messages. Fingers crossed that you have nodes nearby. Or even if you've got another device, you can talk to yourself. Now, if you want to use the app to control your node, simply open the app and tap on the device listed under Bluetooth, entering your pairing code and then you're good to go. All receive nodes will be listed along with their location on the map if they're broadcasting their location. Now I don't know about you, but this device looks pretty cool. It's the Lilygo T-Watch S3. You'd be glad to hear that the SX1262 LoRa radio board is installed in this cool gadget, along with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth version 5. 
The color 1.54 inch touchscreen has haptic feedback with a small vibration. The T-Watch also incorporates a microphone and speaker, although the microphone is not used with MeshTastic at this time. Now the speaker will emit a tone when a new message has been received and you can just tap the screen to stop the alert sound. To change screens, you simply swipe left or right on the display. The internal battery is only a measly 470 milliamp hour, which lasts around two hours before needing to be recharged. Now, if you get one of these and the battery doesn't charge or the watch doesn't turn on without a USB cable plugged in, then just check a small micro switch under the battery. It's most likely turned off. You just need to turn it back on again. From a recent breakdown video, I noticed the LoRa antenna is actually in the strap. So it will be interesting to see what kind of range I can get with this. Now, if you want to see a dedicated video on this item, then let me know what you would like to see in it. Now, last up is the T-Beam Supreme, which comes in two versions, apart from band specific versions, of course. And that's down to the GPS receiver that's installed. The Neo M10S Supreme board costs around £20 more than the L76K version. So if you're not bothered about having a more sensitive GPS receiver, then just go for the cheaper model. You notice the GPS antenna on the top of the T-Beam Supreme, right next to the LoRa antenna connection. There's also a battery compartment on the rear, which fits one of those 18650 vape style batteries. Now just make sure to get the flat top versions for better connection. The Supreme boards come with the SX1262 LoRa radio module, along with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth version 5. Now I've mentioned Bluetooth version 5 in this video and older models had 4.2, but version 5 provides a longer range and a higher throughput. So it's version 5 you really want to go for, especially if you're remote mounting your MeshTastic node. Now I believe this device has the most pre-installed sensors out of any of the MeshTastic compatible devices that I've seen. Now these include temperature sensors, humidity sensors, gyroscope, real-time clock, and an air pressure sensor, all of which can be set in your node info packet, assuming you've enabled the telemetry module within the device configuration. Now you'll also notice that on the S3 core board, there are two IPEX connectors, one's for LoRa and one's for GPS. So if you wanted to connect your antennas directly to the board, you have the option there. I guess the Supreme is designed as a more portable solution, considering it's kind of vertical orientated. Well, apart from the screen that is when the applications run in. Now you may be looking at all of these modules and thinking they're a bit ugly because essentially they're just a bare circuit board exposed to the elements. However, if you have access to a 3D printer, then you can most likely download the 3D printer files for free and print some nice cases. I believe there's also some folks out there selling their own designs already printed for those of you that don't have a 3D printer. Now I know I haven't covered all of the Lidigo Mesh-tastic capable devices like the T-Echo for example, and that's because I don't actually have one here to show you. Now I don't see any point in making a video about a product if you don't actually have it in front of you. Now Lidigo are not the only Mesh-tastic compatible devices available. You have the popular Heltec V3 and the Rack wireless system. Now, if you're interested in this kind of gear, then remember to check back soon as I have some new MeshTastic compatible devices on its way to me. And believe me, you don't want to miss that. And I also didn't show flashing each device, and that's because the procedure I showed you earlier on in the video is the same for each of the devices. Anyway, guys, if you have a LilyGo product which you use for MeshTastic, let me know down in the comments below which model you use. I'd be interested to know if any of you guys have a different experience with different modules. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.